This is a completely player made castle, and this is a player made cliffside fortress town. Both of these were made by just a few players each over the course of two days during the last Anvil Empires playtest. And even at its pre alpha stage right now, this game is showing an incredible amount of depth and polish that you'd be hard pressed to find in other fully released games on Steam. If you don't know what Anvil Empires is, I have a couple videos already that go over the game in detail that I'll link in the top right of your screen here as well as down in the description below. But essentially it's a massive multiplayer online persistent war game set in the medieval ages. Split between three different factions, you and your allies set out to survive and create settlements, forts, farms, blacksmiths, trade routes, cavalry armies, everything else you can think of in order to defend your territory and expand it. And with a completely brand new game engine called R2, built from the ground up specifically in order to support a game like this, where thousands of players can be on the map at one time, the development has already been incredibly impressive. As you can see, the building in this game is really nice, and this is only the second public playtest that we've had since the game's announcement on Steam just over a month ago. For the test in this video, however, the dev stated that it was going to be focused on settlements, and although you can normally do whatever you want in game, go become a fisherman, go join an army, go raid a Town, well, in this playtest, they actually restricted PvP in order to allow players the ability to build, explore, and test without the fear of large scale raids and other disruptions. With Anvil already giving off a Valheim RuneScape Minecraft vibe, I was incredibly excited to dive on into this playtest, and a small group of us decided to try and build a small town in hopes to expand into a legit fortress. We decided on a location surrounded by resources, some silver, iron, and stone, and placed our gathering pit, the entry level set building which can be upgraded to a proper town hall and named ourselves Raven Hill <laughs> uh, which apparently turned into Raven Hill 2 since I didn't see the original Raven Hill down in the bottom right of the map yeah so I actually really like the naming conventions in this game since it prevents obscenities and a whole bunch of moderation issues that I'm guessing would of course happen if players had complete freedom in naming their settlements but it would have been nice if the drop down menu to choose my town was actually updated with either something grayed out or if if maybe they added a modifier, like if I wanted to do Raven Hill, well, it was now going to be new Raven Hill. Now, obviously, there's a lot of placeholders here, and I wouldn't be surprised if something in the future like that was added, because I did think it looked weird when I looked at the map and saw a bunch of settlements with the number two behind the name. It just was a little immersion breaking, especially when everything else in this game is done so well. But honestly, that was just so minor, and we were proud to establish and build Raven Hill 2. Within a couple hours, we had built up our settlement into something respectable, and quite a few nearby players came and joined us. I'm not gonna lie, it's really cool that the PvE elements in Anvil, like wolves and bears, but also the simple inclusion of the hunger mechanic, pretty much forces players into working together. Players who had spawned nearby were drawn to the settlement the larger it got since we had player houses for player storage. We had plenty of weapons, and most importantly, we had a constant stream of food being cooked and gathered. As such, the two of us who started Raven Hill 2 grew to over 10 players and we were able to begin planning a farm. We built out a stables for horses and we even began laying out blueprints for better fortress walls. While some players like myself were chopping trees and producing planks for construction out in the lumberyards, others were making the long trek south to clear out a bear den so that we could begin mining stone. It's really surprising how playable this pre-alpha game is since right about now is when I really started to feel like I was in a big game of Valheim multiplayer. Everything just felt so polished and the mechanics of working together were just done so well. Now, if you disregard some of the smaller bugs that we ran into, the biggest question mark for me when it comes to games like this is the multiplayer interaction and the gameplay loop of how rewarding it is to play together. This is only the second public playtest, and the multiplayer aspect, in my opinion, has already succeeded in being worth my time and making me want to play and develop and build more. After five or six hours, it really felt like Raven Hill 2 was in a pretty respectable spot, but this was just our own settlement and as much as I enjoyed seeing our progression, I really wanted to see what others had come up with in the world as well. It had been reported that two large groups had set out to the islands in order to try and build two enormous castles, but unfortunately the only way to actually get there was to physically get there by boat and on foot. I had to walk across the land, sail in a boat, finally land ashore, and then adventure past bears and wolves just to see these places. 
it was going to be a long journey, and I had to prepare by hunting a few boar, harvesting some berries, harvesting some of my own cabbages that we grew earlier, and cooking a variety of different foods so that I could actually survive the journey. I also had to pull out some of our leather armor and a sword just in case I ran into any trouble. This aspect is a fantastic feature, and it seems so simple just traveling to another part of the world, but it feels so much more immersive when you actually have to walk across or sail across or prepare yourself so you don't starve to death than simply just pressing escape, clicking on the map, and redeploying. It kind of gave me old school Morrowind vibes, so I really hope the devs keep this type of force travel in game as we progress through the pre-alpha, alpha, and eventually beta. After building a boat, I said, off down the river and made my way out to the open ocean, where I even passed a boat of enemy remnant players. But in Anvil, there's actually cross-faction voice and text chat, so I chatted with them for a minute or two and then continued on my journey. This unique aspect of cross-faction voice is awesome and has plenty of opportunities for amazing roleplay moments, which I would find out later since I actually ran into an enemy settlement that was built along a road. And uh, let's just say the owner there, well, he wasn't the best of hosts. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to pass. Uh, I'm just a peasant, man. Oh, okay. Um, uh, do, you, do you have a lord? I, I live here. Or lady, no, I can speak to. I Is am, your parent I, home? I am solo, man. I am solo, man. Oh, um, I'm just trying to pass through. Can I just? I uh, uh, walk, walk around, man. Walk around. Walk. It's, it's there's wolves and and boars and out there, you know. Ah, uh, you strong man. You strong man. All right. Okay. I'm weak right. man. Fair, fair. No, I'm a beach man. Eventually, I arrived to the island, and what I saw was incredibly impressive. Straight Castle was, well, it was just that. It was a castle, and after talking to the builder, it was essentially made in a way which he felt was going to be very meta in terms of gameplay combat systems. The whole goal was to protect the town hall, which is your main spawn point for the settlement, and he wanted to protect the players respawning in and the beds nearby. After players would spawn in, you'd funnel them up to the battlements, and there you can defend from up high. This took an incredible amount of planning and effort in order to get everything so compact, and what I did like about Straight Castle was that it had a sprawling housing and industrial area around the castle itself, so if a siege did happen, there was essentially a crumble zone of sorts that still needed to be fought over in a bunch of barren land before the attackers could ever make it to the actual keep. After Straight Castle, I went on up to see Ryefort, which was, I think the best word to describe it is cinematic. It was beautiful. I, I felt like I was in Game of Thrones. This fortress sprawled out along a cliffside which overlooked the beach, and the entire thing was walkable if you wanted to simply stay on top of the stone wall defenses. When you entered the fort, there was essentially a peasant quarters with player housing and a farm, and as you went deeper and deeper, you'd pass a kitchen and a dining hall, various resource and production areas, and in the center of it, you had the town hall walled in again for another layer of protection. The beach itself was also walled off to prevent naval invasions, and at the back there was even a player made prison in a tower, where they would push you into a small little room, remove a banister, and you would be locked in. The creativity players have is just amazing, but what I thought was even more telling on how quickly the devs are working to develop and improve this game was that I had actually tried to do something like Ryefort in my first playtest a couple weeks ago. This is a picture of the invalid foundation error I received when I tried to build on the cliffside. But just within a couple weeks, building was completely overhauled by the devs to allow players a ton of freedom in creating the world, and this has to be appreciated. Additionally, much of the work actually done on this island was all because of the implementation of traders. Throughout the world of Anvil, there are traders which allow players to sell materials like bread or wood, but you can also buy building materials like cut stone and planks with silver. Straight Castle, for example, was built right next to a silver mine, so the players simply produced a bunch of processed silver coins to buy all the lumber they needed, making for a much less labor-intensive build, especially when you take into consideration the amount of of wood required would have been incredibly difficult to get since players would have had to not just chop down wood that was getting further and further away, but then also replant all the trees and wait for them to grow to continue development. The trader is a fantastic idea which gives players a route to a successful town no matter where they decide to go. Another aspect of devs really trying to think through a large persistent world and players trying to do everything that they want to do in a sandbox. Overall, Anvil Empires is already shaping up to be 
be an incredible game. And the next public playtest is going to be combat focused. And I'll be planning on joining a large group to get some real sieges in and hopefully infantry and cavalry combat. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed so far with the development? Anything you wish to see more of? Or perhaps maybe there's something you don't like so far? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.